Hi, and welcome to uh, Tuesday, June the 16th. I am Michael Bean, and this is your free acting lesson at myfreeactingclasses.com. Uh, if you go to that website, you can find me, and you can find Casey, and you can find all of the information you need. I'm a little bit slow with uploading last week's videos, uh, and a huge thanks to Casey for covering the lesson yesterday. Um, the now I'm just going to quickly grab somebody who I know. Uh, hey, uh, Quinn, I'm going to make you a co-host, okay? And then if I tell you to, uh, if anybody starts acting weird, you know, we'll get you to kick them off. And also, if my Wi-Fi cuts out, then you know, juggle or do magic tricks or something. You know, but at least then you know uh, nobody ends up, you know, uh, stuck here by themselves. All right, there we go. Uh, there are a couple of things that I want to talk about today. We're going to uh, use uh, two short scripts. Uh, one we're going to look at just for the first moment, you know, so, uh, and then uh, one we're going to look at in a little bit more detail and answer some story questions. Uh, the Because I missed yesterday's lesson, I'm going to start uh, with not my wise words, uh, but some wise words from uh, Jackie Lind, uh, who's a casting director, came in and was on this lesson uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, some of you may have been there for that lesson. So uh, let's, uh, camera technique, you know, the one of the things that I like to cover is, you know, the eye light, the light that's reflecting your eyes, uh, frame what the camera is seeing, uh, the eye line, the line between your eyes and what you're looking at. You know, all of these things end up being really, really important. And here's some of the decision maker folks to remind you of why. So, so there we go. Jackie, and the clip I wanted to show you was 1611. Let's see where are we here. We are Jackie Lynn is the casting director. She, um, you can look her up on IMDb. She cast a whole bunch of stuff. I'm also going to put the link to this video in the chat window. She didn't want it made public, but I am allowed to share the link. So uh, here it is. You know, sometimes it's not the, the, the best actor that gets the role. A lot of the time it's the best audition. And so to have some training to understand, you know, how it works, like when you come in and to hit your mark and what a slate is and how to do it and how to prepare it and how to look, I look to see if you've had some sort of training, you know, like with Michael or, or somebody else so that that i know that when you come in um you're gonna feel so she's talking about you know what she wants to see on a resume i think the the thing that i wanted you to hear there is uh that it's not it's often not the best actor who gets the role it's the best audition you know and so just a reminder of why you're doing classes like this why you're practicing why you're trying to you know tweak your home setup uh, and make sure that you know how to do a really quality self-tape uh without a whole lot of effort uh, the the first time uh, you do a self tape at home, of course, it will be effortful. By the time you've done ten of them, you you'll have your system down. Yeah, here's Jackie. Self tape, again. and as you start going into a new time, and during this after uh, coronavirus, or during uh, during the next probably year, self tapes are going to be really really important. And so to have a good self tape, to have have someone like Michael help. I didn't pay her to. Uh, plug me, you know, but the just so that I'm not telling you how important self tapes are, uh, I am um, the uh, the self tapes are super important, you know. The and and having your setup, you know, for self tapes, uh, and having your set uh, set up for uh, camera work, uh, really important. Yeah. So here's another uh, quick clip from uh, casting director Tiffany Mack. Again, right around the 1710 mark. Now, Tiffany, you know, uh, I've got on record saying that you know, she's only going to watch about the first 30 seconds, 30 seconds uh, of uh, of the tape. You know, and uh, I wanted to share this bit yesterday. So here's what you missed. I think the folks who are joining us are are trying to be ahead of the curve. You know, on Zoom and on um, self tape auditions. Before we open it up to questions from everybody. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, self tape auditions, you know, and um, what you like, what you like to see in one? When you're like, yeah, oh, this one's, this is a quality one. You know, mm -hmm. kind of what stands out for you. Good lighting is important. 
so weird. I never, never thought that, that would be the forefront of my mind, but it's a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, it's true. Sometimes I'll see. First of all, I have no problem if people self tape at home. I mean, yes, if you're going to get coached, then go and self tape with your coach. But self taping at home on your iPhone or your Android is totally fine as long as it is horizontal, not portrait. Horizontal, blank wall, white is fine, but blue or gray or green is better. But you know, white is totally acceptable. But good lighting, something where I can see your face and see your eyes and the emotions that you guys are doing. Um, a lot of people will sit by a window, so it'll be half their face is lit and the other half is in the shadows, or they'll be sitting in what looks like a windowless, dim, it almost looks like a motel room where it's just like an orange haze. You know, like, we're trying to show you in the best light literally possible, so be very cognizant of that. Anywhere where you can have bright natural lighting, that's what you guys should do. Like, I'm looking at all of your guys. Okay, so there's uh, casting direct, uh, director Tiffany Moore. So if we I use this opportunity to uh, look at the lighting setup. Uh, you know, the, let's take a look up here. You know, uh, right, so you can see it's a great setup. The light reflected in the eyes. You know, it looks like just a, a blue sheet in the background. Uh, the we don't you don't need blue either, right? If we look at Christina's setup, you can see that you know a, a neutral wall behind is just as good. You know, and there's, uh, again, a small light reflecting their eyes. You know, if the, anything you can do to get more eye light uh, is, uh, is likely uh, to make you look better. Now, uh, London, if you don't mind, I'm not, I mean, you weren't expecting to be on video, uh, but I'm uh, going to highlight you. So this is what being side lit or back lit looks like. So uh, London, you know, because there's no light reflecting her eyes and because the light is coming from behind her, you know, uh, instead of onto her face, uh, it's going to uh, look like, uh, she's not feeling as much, you know, and so that that light, you know, that reflects in your eyes, probably super important. Like we're monkeys, you know, and we just are gonna like look at the shiny thing. We're like, ooh, shiny, uh, and so you want the shiniest possible thing uh, to be your eyeballs. Uh, so uh, the that's why one of the reasons why eye light is important. Um, the I used to recommend um, using what's called a soft box light, but I've seen people getting way better. Uh, re, uh, results just like or uh, with very simple uh, ring light an led ring light a uh, whole bunch of different options you know on amazon you know and honestly uh, you can probably do it with what you've got at home by just taking a desk lamp and putting a sheet of paper over top with a paper clip and pointing it right at your face too you know so it's, it's just worth uh, playing around okay the so there's your you know quick technical rundown uh let's look at a uh, a little script so one of the things that KC and I've uh, been talking about and that I've been really making a point of teaching in my classes on weekends and also uh, in my um, Monday night class, I teach an adult class on Mondays um, as well, uh, is the importance of showing us the character right in the first seconds that we see you. Uh, the, that if casting is only gonna watch 15 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds. What are you showing us about the character uh, right at the very top of the scene? You know, and uh, so that's deciding on those characteristics, et cetera. So I wanna show you like a short, silly scene. And then I want you to throw some ideas in the chat window of what you might do uh, sort of before the lines uh, to show us who you are and who your version of this character is. So let's see if I've got it opened up already. Bits and pieces. Of course, we're not going to read the whole thing. Uh, the, what we've got is just these first couple of lines. Uh, Brody enters with a smile. Brody's the younger brother. Uh, Crystal's the older sister. Uh, did you guys feel that? Today's the day. Crystal, he does this all the time. He thinks it's the day his superpowers finally came in. Now, if you are uh, playing Brody, uh, the tendency is typically, uh, if I saw a whole bunch of actors do this, if I saw 10 actors do this, my expectation is that you know, eight or nine of them, uh, well, the second I said action, we'll just start with a line. Did you guys feel that? Today's the day. You know, so uh, even though we've got this direction here in the script, Brody enters with a smile. You know, so we know everything we need to in these first two lines about who Brody is. If you're playing Brody, you know, and just use it as a creative exercise, regardless of your age. If you're playing Brody, uh, and so you're 
you, you're this kid who thinks this, uh, who every day has decided that you've got a different superpower, like, yeah, maybe I'm getting my superpowers today. You know, so what is that like? Quirky, weird, enthusiastic, like crazy, fun, big energy. You know, the, uh, the first thing that I would recommend trying is just do this. Just, you know, walk in, you know, with a smile. Now, um, especially with a self-tape, I would say don't start with a blank screen. You know, the, you want them to be able to uh, look uh, at the uh, very beginning of the tape, you know, and, uh, and see your face. You know, but if you want to enter, it's easy enough. Uh, and let me see if I can get somebody else to demo for me. Okay, so we're doing Brody. Did you guys feel that today's the day? Did you guys feel that today's the day? Uh, and so somebody got a set up uh, where they can stand, uh, where they're standing. Let me see. Yeah, okay, great. Do it. I don't know your, you've got emojis, you know, so I can't, I don't know your name. Yeah, do it. Stand up. That's perfect. Good. And you're going to have, uh, and I'll, you know, try and unmute you and then you try and unmute yourself. You just have to help me out there. Bump. Unmute. There okay. we go. Good. So what's the line? It's, um, you guys, you guys feel that is the day. Perfect. Okay. You know, and so, uh, start in one corner of the screen, right? So, uh, so, uh, Right, so you start back, and then and you're actually standing. You look like you're on a couch or something. I'm on my bed. <laughs> I need somebody who's actually standing. I said I need a stander. Somebody, I need somebody standing up to show you. Okay, Emma, perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, perfect, perfect. So Emma, go stand all the way over by the uh, the door. Right, and so there, so we can still see her face, but she's got all of this depth, and I think that I think that. I think that you uh, all do do. The I think that uh, we don't use depth enough uh, in uh, the uh, in self tapes, and especially now that we've got Zoom, uh, you know, I think that it's really easy to um, the uh, it's really easy to use depth. So if you start by the door, you know, and uh, jump up and down a couple of times to get energy in your body. Like, get your knees up, get your knees up. Actually, get your knees up. Like, jump, jump, yeah, 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 big jumps. Jump, big jumps, good. Nobody's ever gonna see what you do before they start rolling tape. You know, that's, you know, just adds uh, more sparkle. Good, and so, uh, the, oh no. So the very first thing is, like, she just comes in with a smile. Good, keep that smile, and just run into the mark. Stand by, action, go. Did you guys Yeah, perfect. Good, and so that's what it says on the page. And you can see she's got depth, and obviously we'd get the chair out of the way, and she'd run into what's called a medium close-up. You know, so, uh, right, so close up. So just, if you can, push the chair over, uh, out of the way, Emma, so that you've got more space so you can get right in front of the camera. Yeah, good, closer, 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 closer. Uh, and that's too close, too close. Okay, what, about where I'm at? Yeah, yeah, that's the medium close-up. Good, now, the, uh, now start in the corner again. So that was just, uh, what it said in the um, uh, in the breakdown was like enters with a smile, you know. But if you are like, uh, if what if something weird and fun is happening to your body, you know, uh, to show us that you think your superpowers are coming in? Yeah, exactly. So come in with like all of the wiggle, you know, and like, or even better, like walk in, do the wiggle, and then say, "Did you guys feel that?" <laughs> okay, good. So start in the corner. Start by the door. Um, Get, uh, get ready, get ready, stand by, and action, run! <laughs> Did you guys feel that? Today's the day. Good, and you see how we see so much more character. You know, now, uh, Christina, um, would you be willing to, uh, to help me out with a quick demo? He, he said, uh, putting her up for everybody to look at before asking for consent. Sorry, hi. Um, so the, uh, uh, so the first part of Crystal's line is, ah, oh, he does this every day. You know, so, so what's the line? That's, that's all you need to say. Got to unmute yourself first so you can talk. Unmute. Yeah. Good. So, okay, got it. So just give me, ah, oh, he does this every day. Oh, he does this every day. Good, exactly. Now, there's this whole thing where you don't have the first line, right? And so uh, the we would look at Crystal and go, okay, what is you know, Crystal's deal? You know, she's um, 
uh, obviously like she's annoyed you know with the brother but like maybe she's you know sophisticated or smart or she thinks of herself as like so much better than her family or she's like so or maybe she's the like sort of quintessential grumpy teen but whatever it is you would decide what you were doing beforehand because it doesn't say in the script and this is so so frequent that uh, again if i saw 10 young actors uh do this you know, then i would expect nine of them would just look at the reader until it was their turn to say, ugh, he does this every day. And so we would see nothing about the character for the first like 10 to 15 seconds. So you've missed the opportunity, right? If they're only gonna watch, I'm gonna, un I'm gonna mute everybody again because I'm getting background noise from somebody, Christina. Um, so I'm just gonna need to, you to unmute yourself again. The, um, uh, and so, uh, the, try this. Uh, you know, the uh, imagine that you're on your cell phone. It doesn't matter if you've got your cell phone there. Just keep it down below the edge of the frame. Aha! Perfect. Good. You know, and uh, and stay. Uh, if you're using me as the eye line, then have it be just the other side of the camera. Are you like? I know it's tempting. Okay. Exactly. And so look at the cell phone. Look at the cell phone. You know, and uh, yes. Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. See how she's bringing it up into the shot so that we can just see the edge of it. Not necessary. If she didn't have a cell phone, she'd keep it down below the frame. Uh, but since she's got it, she's going to show it to us, you know, and like, uh, see, uh, you know, uh, send a, like a, like a snide or mean text to somebody and enjoy it. Give me a like, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, exactly. You know, and then you're going to, uh, the, and then you're going to look up and you're going to see your brother coming. Oh my God. You know, so like, exactly before he even talks, you know, and then when he, she, uh, you remember that little wiggle that Emma did? So, You'd have to invent that if you're the actor, but right now you don't have to. You can just see see her do the wiggle, and so it's like exactly. And so it's like, what is that? It's enough to just uh, if big broad comedy, then you might react just the way you did by showing it to us. You know, and if it's like more subtle or more dramatic, then it might be just enough to know that's happening and we can see it in your eyes. So stand by. Wait, uh, what's Lenny again? Oh, okay, it does every oh, does time. Does this every day. Right. Uh, so uh, bring your phone up just a touch. There it is, perfect, you got it. You know, uh, stand by and action. Did you guys feel that? He does this day. He does this every time. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, and so the, um, the, if it was big, broad comedy, you probably could get away with the eye roll, uh, but, it, but it doesn't need it. You know, it's what's called indicating or like, you know, and you basically, um, the only times it's appropriate, I think, is when you are doing something for really, really, really young audiences where they're not going to get it. So do it uh, again without the uh, the big eye roll, you know, so that we can see just the uh, the difference in style, you know, if the audience is a little bit older. Just like, yeah, see, like, that's what I mean. You don't have to show it to us. Just look at him and know that he's being weird. Right? But if you try and use your eyes and face to show us, it's a little bit like if I show you I'm really happy to meet you, then you're like the creepy guy with the big eyeballs. Right? We're so happy we can see everything. So look at the phone. Stand by. And back. <gasps> Did you guys feel that? Good. Um, so I'm going to start you again because uh, the other thing we're practicing is that first 15 seconds. So I need you to send the mean text. Then I need you to look at uh -huh. your brother's coming. You know the uh, before he even talks. Start with the phone. Okay. So like I'm sending the text, and then when he starts running, and then then I look. Uh, you're, so don't you're look. not going to wait to start acting until somebody else talks. You're going to do okay. all of this acting and reacting before the other person's line even starts. Okay. So I start with my like. I, I'm going to wait until you see me before, to say my line. Stop. Okay. And by look at the phone. And, oh, shoot. Action. Did you guys feel that? <gasps> Today's the day. He does this every time. Good. And so that's the what we would get in a different style. Really nice, Christina. Thanks so much for, for being a demo for me. It's exactly what I needed. Uh, so this, um, I want to go to the story questions and let's look at a, a different script, um, which we're not going to have a chance to get to, into all of the story questions with this uh, next script, but at least we'll have a chance to get started. Uh, and, and particularly to illustrate uh, the kinds of choices that are necessary and useful to make these uh, that choice about that first 20 seconds. Uh, the, so this script is from an untitled uh, Lifetime movie. Uh, we're 
just going to look at this first moment with Officer Tate. You know, so this is uh, the, I believe they saw both women and men for this role and they ended up casting a uh, woman for it. Uh, in, uh, interior Chris's school, Officer Tate scans the faces of students streaming out. She looks at the paper hands, a mug shot of Lisa. She spots Lisa with two other emo girls, approaches her. Officer Tate, Lisa, can I have a word with you? The two girls look at Lisa oddly and hurry off. Okay, so if you are Officer Tate, uh, the now the, I would say the percentages are lower, you know, and that the more experienced an actor gets, the more uh, I would expect that there would be some kind of real moment before. You know, I, I would, the, I, it would be interesting to ask an actual casting director, but my expectation based on working with adult students, you know, at different levels, you know, is that somewhere around half or possibly slightly more than half of people uh, on action, like the very, the second they said action would just say, Lisa, can I have a word with you? You know, and then about half of them would know to at least see the girl and get her attention. You know, and I, and so I think that if you are putting in this moment before, it can be an indicator, uh, the kind of thing that casting or decision makers use as an indicator that you know what you're doing. And so, especially if they're only gonna watch the first 15, 20, 30 seconds, it's a great way to help control that first impression. Right, so uh, the, and then if uh, the, we're looking at Lisa, I haven't broken any curfew, is that what they're saying now? Officer Tate waves Lisa over to her cruiser, follows. You know, so uh, we've got that moment before for both characters. And we can come back uh, and look at this line, but if we're just looking at Officer Tate right now, Lisa, can I have a word with you? You know, that's the line. You know, now the story questions, you know, which uh, the went over uh, last Tuesday, and I, I try and, uh, and hit uh, every Tuesday, uh, starts here. Uh, the story, it's a lifetime MOW, uh, which stands for movie of the week. It's just another word for TV movie. Uh, it's a, the, this term movie of the week is left over from cable TV where there would be like, there would be a movie every week as opposed to you know, movies being just released on Netflix every day. Um, the, but you'll still see it sometimes, uh, MOW uh, in scripts, but it's a TV movie. Um, you know, the, uh, we would make a decision about what the writer's story is. You know, in this case, uh, let's sort of say that the writer's story is, um, you know, uh, you know, boy uh, beaten, badly beaten by his, uh, badly beaten by teen girls. Uh, you know, my story, if I'm Officer Tate, you know, is, uh, maybe my story is like, this is my first, uh, case that I'm handling myself, right? So it's like, makes it extra important. And it's like, okay, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really gonna hand, uh, handle all these details. Or, you know, you know uh, I could decide something completely on the other end and go like, oh, I know exactly who this is, right? Like, I can't prove it yet, but you know, I know this Lisa girl's uh, involved. You know, so if I'm talking about how to craft that first 20 seconds. This, I think, is where you're gonna get the most mileage. And this doesn't have to take very much time. Often you can pull this right from the breakdown. Uh, the thing to think about is how, if you're Officer Tate, how are you describing yourself? So what are a couple of words, if you're Officer Tate, uh, to describe yourself? I'm gonna hop into the chat window. Uh, right, so uh, if you're playing Officer Tate, uh, confident, great. Right, so I'm uh, confident, authoritative, and then if I'm playing with, this is my first case I'm handling by myself, you know, uh, focused, I might seem nervous. You know, uh, respecting rules, great, newbie. Um, uh, insecure, but hides it. But, but hides it. Shy is uh, uh, would be a really tough one to play as a cop, and that so that might actually be really interesting to play with. It's the kind of thing that that even talking about how you might play that it would take me five minutes, and we've only got seven more minutes. You know, so let's think about these: confident, authoritative, focused, nervous, respecting rules. So you would pick two or three of these that fit. Uh, your interpretation by the book. Sure, great. By the book. You know, uh, yeah, hi so uh, hiding your feelings, so like reserved or professional. 
right? So the uh, so Olivia, let's play with let's play with reserved or professional, you know, um, the which also you know or confident and authoritative, you know, and then let's um, you know play with you know uh, like nervous, respecting the rules, insecure but hides it, you know, those two different versions of the scene. You know, so the the line again, uh, and I know I'm bouncing around a bunch here, uh, is Lisa, can I have a word with you? And there's a scanning the face of the student streaming out, looking at the paper in her hands. One of the things that I keep saying in the camera uh, session is, if you don't have a clearer idea of how to tell the story as your character, start by just playing ex out exactly the stage direction. If so, uh, the if uh, whoever's gonna help me out, so Lisa, can I have a word with you? Uh, so can I get one of the uh, adults? Uh, hey, Deborah, how would you feel about being a demo for me? You wanna play cop? Okay, let's unmute you. Oh dear. Right, so since you're sitting down, let's assume that you're in your squad car. Yeah, you know, and uh, and do you want to play with the uh, the authoritative one uh, or uh, the like? You know, not sure one. The authoritative. Perfect. Yeah, you know, and so mm -hmm. uh, the uh, let's have you uh, start with um, the opposite side of the camera. So if you're using me as the eyeline for Lisa, start with uh, just the other side of the camera. I mean, no, sorry, not you physically. I mean your eyeline. Oh. Yeah. Oh, in my eye light. Okay. Yeah, and so start watching all the students stream out of class. And I would say just physically look at things in your apartment. You know, if if our eyes are in midair, uh, but just just the other side of camera, right? So so it's like, uh, yeah. So pick a couple of things and just look at two things in your apartment that are actually just the other side of camera. And then you look over at me. You see me. Uh, you check the paper in your hand. You know to see if uh, if it matches me. And then you uh, say, Lisa, the, what's the Lisa, can yeah, I? Yeah, what's my line? <laughs> I know, I had to look at it too. It's, it's Lisa, can I have a word with you? Okay. Okay. Uh, stand by and action. Lisa, can I have a word with you? Perfect. You know, and so that's exactly what it says in the script. Now, if you wanted that, like, you know, extra authoritative, uh, then one of the things you could do, you know, is uh, stay very still, right? Uh, stay very upright, uh, right? And you could disapprove of the those two things that you see in your apartment. You could just have opinions like, ugh, ugh, you know, uh, and uh, and then uh, same thing, you know, when you when, when you see Lisa. You know, like clock the clothespins that she's got to her nose, you know, or the clothespins, the, the safety pins she's got to her nose and the heavy eyeliner and the punk rock t-shirt, you know, and uh, and give me a moment of uh, the uh, taking her in and judging her before you say the line, you know, and you don't have to play it because Lifetime, you know, it's um, the like it's slightly melodramatic, you know, but I think inside of that world where things are heightened, you still want to be a good actor. Um, the, so am I looking? Am I looking at Lisa where I'm looking at the beginning? Ah, uh, no. Uh, you're going to use oh, me. So I'm going to turn. Okay, gotcha. Exactly, okay. exactly. But you're just going to take okay. your time with it. You're going to okay. because you've got control of the beginning of the scene. You're going to take 15 seconds to show us who the character is. Okay. So stay really, uh, uh, really upright. Uh, look at those other girls. Stand by and action. And look me up and down. Lisa, can I have a word with you? Perfect. Yeah, and uh, and so um, thank you. It is exactly four o'clock now, uh, and so if you were going to do the insecure version, you know, then you know what would that first fifteen uh, seconds be? Obviously, probably you wouldn't want to show the teen girl you were nervous. So the chance for the for the nervous would be in the private moment of like um, something as simple as just like checking the paper. Is that her? No. Is that her? Oh man, I've really got to find her. There she is. <clears throat> okay, putting on my cop demeanor. Lisa, yeah, and then the audience gets to see, oh, she's nervous, but she's covering it, right? Gives us a different version of the character. This is why deciding on what story you wanna tell, uh, and then going through who is this person whose story you're telling? You know, what are the most important adjectives? Ha helps you craft that opening to the scene. And I think that, again, that's the kind of thing that helps us see who you are as an artist because we get to see your choices. 
uh, and your interpretation of the story. And also it shows that you are technically competent at the start of a take, you know, because instead of just like, okay, I'm an actor, I'm supposed to say the lines, you know, you're um, living inside the story. Uh, something that uh, I heard from a local acting teacher, uh, he says, it's not the lines, it's the life. And I think that first 15, 20 seconds is a real opportunity to show us the life of the character. Um, and so the, that um, lots of more that we could say about that, but it's only half an hour uh, and folks gotta go. So the, I'm gonna uh, give you all the power to unmute yourselves uh, so that you can shout your encouragement and enthusiasm to each other. Uh, and uh, then anybody wants to stick around and ask questions, I'm happy to stay and answer questions. I really enjoyed that last one. Uh, there you go. Four o'clock. Thank you. Bye. 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 I don't um, is there a link? I know my camera is not working completely, but hopefully we'll be working tomorrow. There's something happening to it. But um, I was just wondering, is there a link for that first video? Oh, with the, um, you said. I just forgot yeah. to. Um, to no, no, no worries. No worries. <laughs> so coming right now into the chat window to everyone. Bump. So the first one here is Jackie, and then the second one is Tiffany. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question. There it goes. Uh, ask away. If, if you're in a movie that's a musical, like that, like has like live action mm -hmm. musical, what, and, and if you're, an, you're a really good actor, but you can't sing. Would they make you sing, or would they have somebody their somebody's voice over top of yours? I think the only time that they would replace your voice with somebody else's voice is if you were already famous, you know, and uh, and having your face in the movie would help them sell, you know, their musical. There are so many skilled actors who can both sing and act uh, that I think that that it would both be way less expensive for them, um, you know, but also just kind of would make their life a lot easier. Uh, if they hired somebody who could both sing and act. So I think the times where you hear about like people, uh, somebody doing a musical and then being having the singing all dubbed over, it's when that person's face is so famous that putting them on the poster will help the producer sell the movie. Like those decisions are often made uh, by yeah. the, the folks based on like how they're going to sell their movie. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just wondering, because I can sing, I was just wondering if somebody else couldn't like... Yeah, well, I think if you can sing, then that gives you a, a strong competitive advantage if you're going out for a character who has to sing. You know, the, uh, now I think the exception is, um, uh, or maybe not, it is like a high level competitive uh, athletics. You know, I think that, you know, if you are playing a character who's a figure skater, you know, or who's a freestyle snowboarder or something, that they're probably not gonna let you do those tricks even if you can because they don't want you to be the one who breaks a leg. They, uh, and so that uh, often if you, uh, I mean, of course, some actors, you know, do their own stunts, you know, the, and there are- Jackie Chan. Uh, right, and, well, and there are roles locally, you know, where they're like, we want people who can play hockey, you know, and must play hockey at a high level in order to audition. Uh, but, uh, but where I've had, you know, uh, friends and peers and students uh, book roles, you know, and have somebody else sub in that part, it's when they've got to like do a whole gymnastics routine, you know, and so basically they uh, will like show the person in their gymnastics outfit, you warming up and doing some bendy thing, and then they'll cut to like a distance shot of somebody else being like, and then they'll land, you know, and then it'll cut to, to you going, ah. You know, as you turn off the camera, exactly, exactly. Um, the, so that, and, uh, and again, producers are still gonna try and hire, you know, one person to do all of that if they can, but those are the only times I've seen somebody be replaced. Somebody have another question? I just was talking about that because it was a, related to the other question. Okay, yeah. So like, how, is there like referring to her question as well, like, so let's say two actors are really good at acting, 
but like it's like a musical movie and one of the actors can play the musical instruments and sing and the only one, the other one can only sing would they take the one with a musical that also can play musical instruments like more that can play musical instruments uh, I think that it, it's going to be like producers and directors first choice to find somebody who can do everything now because it's the real okay. world and you just can't always find somebody who's exactly like the person you want with the skills you want who can do all of the things yeah. you know like it's there just isn't a definite yes definite no answer to your question you know is it uh does it help you to be able to do those mm -hmm. things if you're auditioning for a character who can do those things absolutely okay. you know the producer's ideal situation is like good one person they can already do all the things they're amazing at them so easy for us just hire them oh. Yes. You know, um, and sometimes they're like, you know what? We really want Christina. She can't play the accordion, but she can play the ukulele. Uh, and Christina's just so perfect for this that we're going to rewrite the character so she plays the ukulele now. Like that. Also, also sometimes they can rewrite it if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, they, but first they have to decide that you're amazing. You know, so the, uh, the, the I think that being a highly skilled actor, you know, is the deciding factor in all of those things. So like, so to like, let's say you are good. So like learning musical instruments will really help, will really help, right? So like if I can learn, like I do know some musical instruments, but to like know most, like learn to like also do as an extracurriculum thing would be good as well. I think that if it's something that you really enjoy, you know, then absolutely, Basically any kind of performative, anything that you really enjoy uh, enough, you know, to like get skilled at is potentially an asset. You know, but it's not, it's not a for sure thing uh because it's still acting and like none of it is a for sure thing you know so um the the other thing that i'll say is that outside of the world of film and tv some of the artists i know uh who make a living exclusively you know by being artists you know as adults um mm -hmm. do that by being multi-skilled you know so that so that when they're not doing film and tv they can you know uh play music you know and be in somebody's backup band or you know the or sing or you know uh, dance with the dance company or right, that um one of the ways into having a career in the arts is to have a, a hybrid uh career where you're like yeah i'm, I'm gonna do some of all of these things professionally i like and i know some people who do that Okay, and one more question. Like, I went for this acting course as well. So, like, when you're speaking, you shouldn't speak softly, right? You should, like, be, like, loud. I forgot the word for it, but, like, you shouldn't be, like, hi, okay, so this is my name. You should be, like, hi, my name's Christina. Like, be, like, out there and not too, like, loud to, like, screaming point, but you should be, like, a bit loud so they can hear you, right? Christina, I, I, I love that question because it's it's so simple that I think nobody has thought to ask it, and I haven't thought to talk about it, you know, but it's actually really important and relevant. Elaine put it in the chat window. The word you're looking for is projection. Yeah. So, you know, so um, the, uh, what did you, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Um, I don't really eat breakfast. So right. like, now, the volume you just used to say that, that's the volume you should use. Cause that's okay. just, that's just you talking. You know, I, I think uh, now um, how the, like try, uh, now try and, and, uh, and introduce yourself, but, but like, raise your voice to like fill the whole room you're in say okay, so. say hi i'm christina I'm happy to meet you go for it hi i'm christina happy to meet you good so do you hear how the the limiter on the microphone on her computer is like buzzing out her voice you know not only that she's going to sound pushed and forced uh and so the only kind of projects were that i think would be appropriate for that you know are the kinds of uh, extremely broad uh, comedy like multi-camera sitcom where you are playing it like theater yeah and for those okay. some of them some of them uh, in those auditions they'll say you can't be too big play to the back corners of the room yeah, but, okay. but that's because when you're on set for a multi-camera sitcom not only do you rehearse it like theater but you perform it like theater you know they, no instead of wearing individual mics they have these enormous um, microphone cranes uh, the because they're shooting it from a couple of cameras at a time you know, and, uh, and in front of a live audience, like uh, there was a show, Mr. Young, uh, and then I think Package Deal uh, were uh, both shot here and were uh, multi-camera shows. Uh, so. Wow. Uh, the, so the, so again, kind of complicated answer to a simple question. You know, like, yes, if you whisper too much, right? Like, so now actually, you know, uh, whisper your introduction. 
It's Christina. Right, then again, we uh, we can't hear it and it cuts in and out and it's utterly, utterly flat. Like if you if you actually <laughs> whisper, it makes everything sound the same. And if you were too loud, it makes everything sound the same. Mm -hmm. Can you be like middle? Yeah, which is where you normally talk anyway. It's just that like when people get excited or nervous, they start thinking about it too much and they go either too low, too low or too quiet. Mm -mm. Low or too loud. And so the exercise I'll do in class is just be like, good, let's just tell me about something normal. Okay, yeah, yeah, Now that voice, use that voice. Okay, that's okay. Cool. And okay, thanks. Of course. It's a, uh, thank you. It was an excellent question. You know, hey, uh, yeah, great. Please, Livia, you got a question? Okay. Um, how do you uh, deal with nervous, nervous uh, before, audition. before audition? How do you deal with that? Like, well, um, the uh, if you I'll tell you how I deal with it. Yeah, you know, and also it's just such a good question uh, that there are lots of different people who have really good answers for it. You know, so mm -hmm. um, if you go on to uh, confidenceoncamera.com and click the link to that takes you through the YouTube videos, and you watch some of the uh, the Tuesday videos, uh, there uh, there's one with a guy named uh, Ricardo Ortiz and another one with Ben Cotton. Um, oh, I just had to make Ben's private actually, so maybe I will. Uh, while I've got you, I'll, I'll see if I can um, uh, pull uh, pull it up and uh, and give you the link for it. Um, the uh, and then you can uh, see their answers to that in more detail. Yeah, you know, I think that the best thing you can do is accept the fact that you probably will be nervous or ex or excited. Yeah, you know, and uh, and you're going to have to experiment uh, to see. Uh, what, ah, good, there we go. Um, uh, and you're gonna have to experiment to see what helps you. you know, now, you, uh, you don't necessarily have to experiment with acting, you probably can look at your life now. You can go like, okay, when I've got to perform something in front of my class, like what helps? You know, when I've got to, um, something that I'm nervous to talk to a friend about, what helps? You know, yeah. In general, if you can notice what's happening inside your body, you know, uh, the, that's probably the baseline. You know, I think that it's the most problematic you know, if you don't know that you're nervous or excited. Right, like you know how sometimes you see people and they're like, I'm fine. And they're like, you can kind of see them vibrating and you're like, whoa, you're not fine. But you're like, if you can't notice that, that's gonna be a problem. You know, so that's the, 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 the first thing that I would say, you know, is that um, the, uh, anything that gets you practicing noticing your body. You know, and so dance is good for that, martial arts is good for that. You know, personally, I do a lot of yoga. Uh, the, I, I also I do a lot of, uh, of voice work. Uh, you know, and that's something that I could spend another 15 minutes talking about. We gotta let everybody go at some point. You know, the, but anything gets you noticing your uh, voice and body. The other thing that, which is like pure practical, and I think I talked about it last week, that I'll do when I go into auditions, is I'll wear a hat uh, and I'll bring in earphones. You know, so I'll be listening to music and like not looking at people and not looking around the room because I don't want to look at everybody else and like see how pretty they are and have be and have it psych me out. And I don't want to like get into conversations with people who are like, hey, I want to talk to you about all the things, you know, because like I'm really polite and I would want to talk to them even though it would like make me more nervous and throw me off. You know, so that's a, like a practical thing that I personally do. Uh, ben Cotton. Um, so uh, here's Ben Cotton. A link to Ben Cotton's video. It's in the chat window. You can grab that. Uh, the I loved what Ben said about nervousness. The other thing is, uh, like I said, I will, uh, Ricardo Ortiz's video because he's 15, you know, and uh, was just a lead on a TV show called Bajillionaires uh, that shot uh, last year, I think. Huh? And I think. In, in, I think in the interview uh, or in the, the lesson, he said, yeah, um, oh, here? call back for that. I, uh, I actually went and threw up in the bathroom you know, and then uh, I went into the, the callback, uh, which I just loved. Like this was the one thing that like he booked that he ended up as a lead on, right? It's just such a great reminder that um, acting is not about not being nervous. You know, it is about navigating your, uh, your own nerves or excitement in a graceful way. Okay. Uh, Thank you. The, thank you, Michael Bean. Thank you. That's uh, you know, four fifteen. Thanks. We'll our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I will thank see you bye. next Monday. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Michael Bean. Bye. bye, -bye.